Welcome to Herbalife Goes to China. Please welcome your host, president and founder of Herbalife, Mark Hughes. Hi. Welcome to Herbalife Goes to China. Right now, I'm in probably one of the most exciting, fast-paced cities in the entire world, Hong Kong. In just a few minutes, we're going to be jumping on a train here to go to mainland China. And I'm sure when we get there, we're not going to be seeing too many buttons, posters, and Herbalife t-shirts that say, lose weight now, ask me how, that's for certain. We're going to be uh, really casual on this trip. As you can tell, it's very, very hot out here and humid in this part of the world. And uh, we're going to be uh, looking for different uh, ingredients, different nutrients, herbal preparations for different product lines that we'll be coming out with in the future. And one of the places that we're going to be visiting is the Canton Trade Fair, probably one of the largest fairs in the entire world. And we'll be looking at different herbal preparations, different ingredients there. It's really interesting, though. China's not just uh, selling for outside trade any longer, just herbs. They're selling all the way from herbs to tractors. And we're going to be taking a look at exactly how China is trying to implement the free enterprise system in their country. And we're also going to be able to go see a college where students from all over the world are coming to learn about Chinese traditional medicine. And then we're going to discuss the difference between the medicine in the East to that of the Western countries. Accompanying me on this trip is going to be Dr. Albert Lung, who's one of the foremost experts in herbology in the United States, and he'll be doing a lot of interpreting for us on this particular trip. Also coming along with us is Mr. Michael Moore. He's been going over to China for some 20-odd years, and he was the one that many years ago helped set up a lot of the original contacts for Herbalife in China. Also coming with us will be Dr. David Katzen, an MD from UCLA and is the head of Herbalife's Medical Advisory Board and Dick Marconi, who's the actual manufacturer of the Herbalife product. China, land of ancient beliefs, magnificent beauty, and age-old traditions. Its history began thousands of years ago, but it wasn't until the 13th century that the Western world learned of China, when Marco Polo talked of the most advanced civilization he had ever seen. Centuries long before Christ, Chinese art evolved far beyond the elemental stages of the known world. Poetry, calligraphy, music, and pottery were only a few of the many art forms which flourished. The great inspirations then were as they are now. Harmony of nature, philosophy of life, and religious beliefs. Today, China's greatest statistic is its number of people. In 1982, China's population totaled nearly 1,032,000,000. A figure made only more staggering when you realize that in terms of the Earth's total population, almost one in every four is Chinese. The late Mao Zedong once said, the more people the better. And China took this to heart. Every 24 hours, 33,000 more babies are born in China, making an additional 17 million mouths to feed every year. Only recently has an aggressive campaign been mounted to bring the population growth under control. Everyday life in China is hard. Generally wages are low, but employment's not a problem. The government keeps its citizens working, and unless you're too young, sick, or old, you have a job. Many are farmers who can be seen throughout the countryside planting and harvesting rice, China's most important grain crop. Those who live in the cities usually work in factories. Here, Western technology has become very apparent. Computerization is on the rise, and their efficiency with this equipment shows that China will be a country to be reckoned with in the 21st century. Western influence has brought about many other striking changes in China as well. The very old is learning to cope with the very new. Where you once saw only the dull, traditional Mao suit, now you see colorful Western-style clothing, even jeans. And while China sets its sights on acquiring even more technical knowledge from the West, we too are reaping the benefits from this new relationship in the areas of health and nutrition.
You know, it was just a handful of years ago that most people really didn't know what herbs were all about. Most people kind of thought it was witchcraft. They didn't really know what to use. They really didn't know what to take. And it wasn't until 1976 that China held the International Symposium on Herbs. And then started, people started to realize what they were for. That's when I really got excited about herbs and what they would do for your health. And since then, what's happened with herbs and Herbalife has just been absolutely staggering. Chinese medicine is one of the oldest surviving healing arts in the world. In fact, the oldest known herbal record was composed around 200 BC. This traditional medicine uses approximately 6,000 individual herbs, which are derived primarily from plants, but some come from animal and mineral sources as well. From these herbs, countless remedies are prepared. At this pharmacy in a Chinese herbal hospital, customers have come to obtain herbs for a remedy a traditional Chinese doctor has prescribed. The herbal medicine is purchased dry, but it will be prepared in a liquid form to be served as a tonic or a tea. It's a simple preparation. The dry herbs are covered with water, then boiled until about one third of the liquid is left. Liquid is drawn off and the process is repeated. The extracts are combined to make the finished remedy. Pharmacies are not the only places where customers can purchase herbs. In an old-fashioned herbal shop like this one we visited in Hong Kong, there are hundreds of the most commonly used herbs in Chinese medicine. Ready-made herbal preparations like headache and cold remedies are also available. The customers who come here believe in Chinese medicine. They know exactly which herbs they want, or they have come to get a prescription filled. Generally, the prescription is for a daily tonic to help the body prevent disease and sustain good health. Here we are making up a health remedy for uh, David Kathan. We have um, a lot of different things here. This is the uh, Don Kwai, right? Don Kwai. Now, this is a rather unusual looking Don Kwai. Usually, it's in a root form, but this one is after the shape of the, the skin of the, of the root. They cut it and then they press it. We're also going to put some uh, cisander berries in this formula that we're making up. This is for general uh, tonic and especially for the male. And it also helps the lungs, to soothe the lungs. Some of these are, are bark, some are roots, yeah, some are uh, seeds. Yeah, some are That's seeds berries. and these are roots. And of course this is uh, lysium root, which is very common in China also as a tonic. Nineteen different herbs were decided upon to go into David's tonic. We got the formulation written up, although uh, Albert's going to have to translate it for us later. We then went to pay and we found this guy who was so good at the Chinese method of calculation, it was incredible. I wonder how fast this guy could compute our royalty override check. $929. The rest of the checkout was also traditionally Chinese. A pulley system replaces our cash drawer. The money is sent. The change is returned by the keeper of the funds who sits in this protected area. It was really something to watch. What a security system, huh? You finally have your health drink ready, David? Tell us how it is. On the streets, there are herbal shops almost everywhere you turn. After the old-fashioned shop, Albert wanted to show us one that was more modern. In comparison, these shops are like our local convenience stores. Although you won't find in our stores what we found here. This is the bubble from the inside of a fish. And these are some of the snakes that they eat. What if we can get Larry Thompson to give us some chocolate chip cookies for an afternoon and eat some of this? What do we have here, uh, Albert? Well, the Chinese uh, typically use a lot of the herbal products along with food products. And this is a typical store where they have dry fish and dry herbs as well as uh, dried dates and things like that. Besides the wide variety of products, the modern shop offers a luxury I'm sure we wouldn't mind having back home. A doctor is right there on the premises who can answer questions, evaluate your condition, and prescribe the appropriate tonic. While we were here in the herbal pharmacy, uh, a mom and her little daughter came in. She had a cold and so on. And we're going to see the doctor prescribe to her what she should take. Uh, Albert, maybe you can tell us what uh, is going on. Okay, right now uh, the doctor is uh, do, making his diagnosis, and then later he would prescribe some herbs. He can tell by looking at the tongue and the pulse that he has a cold. In his prescription, do they basically boil the herb and then she would drink it? That's right, the same. Uh, uh, they would boil it for 
anywhere from one hour to three hours, usually cooked down from, say, three cups to one cup, and then she would drink it. And, and would the doctor normally be the one that would boil it down, or would mom do that? Mom would do that. Doctor, thank you for allowing us to be here today. And bye-bye. Cho Cho Man. Cho Man He. Cho Man He. And bye-bye, Mom. Bye-bye. Our visit to the herbal shops gave us an appreciation of how time and progress has made it easier and more convenient for consumers to get herbal preparations. But we had another stop to make, an old herbal market in the city of Guangzhou also known as Canton. The herbal market is the Chinese equivalent to America's farmer's market. Consumers come to this huge open-air pavilion to buy large quantities of fresh herbs at low prices. The herbal market has changed radically from what used to be the norm in China. Before, all the profits went directly to the state. Now, with new policy changes occurring within the last few years, once a family has fulfilled its government quota, farmers can take the remaining crops and sell them for personal profit in markets like this. Great looking white fungus, isn't it? Yes. Albert, what do they use that for? Well, it's a it's a tonic, and also it uh, soothes the lung. And in China, also they use this uh, in combination with uh, black mushrooms to reduce the chemotherapy and radiation side effects. What is this here? Uh, this is Dan Shang. It's used for uh, cleaning out the blood, for you know, clearing out the arteries. And should we buy some? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of the White Swan Hotel here in uh, Guangzhou. And China has certainly come an awful long way in helping the people who come here to do business feel more comfortable. As you can see by my surroundings here, it's certainly much different than the first time I came to China. I stayed in the Dongfang Hotel the first time I came here, and it was just terrible. They had a little tiny mattress on the floor, a little refrigerator, and that's all you had. Here we've got six elegant restaurants. We've got a health club. And I think the most important thing that we have is hair dryers. <laughs> but uh, don't get fooled by this hotel because most of China is still very rural. In fact, we got a look at the countryside on the way to our next stop. Leaving the city and heading toward the mountains, we saw acres and acres of rice paddies carved out of the landscape and people of all ages working in the field. Compared to the United States, China has about two-thirds the land available for agricultural production. However, it must support a population four times larger. It is only through food rationing and price controls that the population is adequately fed. The road through the countryside took us up in the mountains to an old-fashioned herbal factory. Although this facility doesn't represent the modern pharmaceutical factories in China, it gave us a chance to see how herbal products have been processed and packaged for many years. Our guide was our own Dick Marconi. With the help of employees and quite a bit of interpretation done on Albert's part, Dick explained how the operation worked. 
What we have here in these vats is a concentrated extract which has already gone through the distillation process. From the vats, the extract is placed into these dryers here behind us to get rid of any of the remaining moisture. Now the dried product is ready to be put through the milling process, where it is ground into particle size that can be compressed into tablets. All right, what we have here is a spray drying uh, equipment that takes uh, liquids or powders, puts them through a process of drying and granulating to come out with a product that will dissolve rapidly in water for uh, fevers and for cold. Have you ever seen uh, a machine quite like this one? No, not in my life. No. I'm amazed that they can do two tons of production with this piece of machinery. Let's take a look at our own factory here in the United States where we manufacture all of Herbalife's products. Here we combine the most advanced computerized and state-of-the-art equipment available with huge machinery to produce tremendous amounts of health products all of which are regulated by the strictest standards of sanitary conditions. We'll move on now to a comparison of the two plants as far as product output. This rudimentary tablet machine compresses the herbal particles into tablets at a rate of about 500 tablets per minute. Our ultra presses, on the other hand, have a productive capacity of about 8,000 tablets per minute. Here we see the use of this flat plate which counts the tablets and dispenses them into bottles. They probably do between 15 and 20 bottles per minute. Our method is much more automated and we fill about 240 bottles per minute. The next step is cottoning and here in China it's a matter of tearing and stuffing one bottle at a time. The machinery at our facility makes it possible to do it much faster, in fact almost 10 times that speed. The corking, sealing, and capping is another slow process. Once the cork is hammered into the bottle, it is dipped into the hot wax to seal it, and then it is capped. At our facility, the seal is already inside the cap, which makes this part of the process one simple step. Now the coating. We were amazed watching this woman who coated the labels almost as fast as our own machines. We were also fascinated by their labeling method. She has glued this pad and now places the labels on it. She then takes the glued labels and affixes them to the bottles. At this rate, she can do about 20 to 25 bottles a minute. Our process is all machine operated, and with this type of automation, we can do 240 finished bottles per minute. All in all, ours is a much faster system but in China, it seems to be a lot more fun. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh. Hey, hey. They're ganging up on me, David. <laughs> this is obviously the most expensive packaging line in China. <laughs> or in the world, if not in the world. Right, Elvis? <laughs> up till now, we had learned about the marketing and processing of herbs in China, but we were also interested in the schooling it takes to become a doctor in herbal medicine. Huangchao College of Traditional Chinese Medicine is one of the most respected institutions in the world for herbal medicine. Approximately 1,500 students attend the college. This academic group includes students from all over China and numerous countries around the world. How do you measure stress? Do you use a ruler? How do you know how much stress? On the day we visited, we had the opportunity to observe a class of students from Birmingham, England, studying Chinese research done on the effects of stress. Students here are trained to identify herbs, learn about their properties, and most importantly, about their medicinal uses. The college offers extensive resources on the history of herbal medicines, as well as the therapeutic formulas which have evolved. Theory, research, practice, and the success of traditional methods combine together to give the best training to the modern doctor of traditional Chinese medicine. Adjacent to the college in a quiet, secluded area is the herbary, a kind of outdoor herbal library. This herbal garden gives students a chance to study and recognize live herbs in their natural form. Both common and rare herbs from all parts of China are grown here. Within the herbal garden is a sculpture of Li Zhi Jin, considered by the Chinese to be one of the greatest herbalists of all time. In the late 1500s, he compiled an extensive book on herbs and herbal remedies, remedies which are still being used today. The highlight of our trip to the Institute was a meeting with top-ranking members of the college staff. Included in this group were the Director of the Foreign Affairs Department, a Director of the Chinese Pharmaceutical Association, and the Head of the Department of Chinese Medicine. 
Our discussion covered many subjects relating to herbal medicine. And when someone checks into the hospital, does the government pay for all their care? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, I, you, you, uh, the patient now needed to pay ten cents. Ten cents. For registration. Mm -hmm. Registration. Registration, right? Yeah. right? yeah. I can think of some people that would like that back home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm sure. Three oh, cents. Three of, cents. Uh, of US three cents. Yeah. Three cents. <laughs> does yeah. does uh, now a physician that uh, you said uh, here before that some of the physicians have retired from government practice. Yeah. Are they then allowed to go into private practice and treat people? Yeah. And earn money on the open have market? To, to get a license from the, from the Bureau of Public Health. Mm -hmm. Where's Bureau of Public uh, Health. Yeah, yeah. Ask, ask the permission, you know. Mm -hmm. And they can earn their own uh, yeah. income. Yeah. This is very different from before, just a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, so far as I know, start from 1983. 83. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not too many. David, you've been in some of the uh, the hospitals also. How how is it different uh, here uh, from the way someone would diagnose a uh, patient to the way that you typically do it in uh, your office? One thing is that the Chinese Chinese system is very holistic, what we would call holistic, mm -hmm. and very oriented towards what we would call prevention. They try to catch it at very very early stages and actually work to keep the body in balance. Isn't it true that the uh, the Chinese doctors used to treat the patient w to be well, and then if the patient got sick they wouldn't have to pay the doctor. They only paid the doctor as long as they were well. In the old days, and then they would yeah. uh, be treated for free if they got sick. Because the role of the doctor was to keep you well, not to wait till you got sick as we tend to do in the West. Although our purpose for going to China was based upon finding out more about herbal medicine, our trip took us past sites where the history of China prevailed. The ancient religions still survive here and temples such as this one are found in many parts of the country. What's up, a temple? It's a It's the Chinese uh, national uh, religion, he said. And how old is this temple here? The final stop of our trip was the Canton Trade Fair. It was the most important reason we came to China. This is where we come to negotiate for herbs that we use in our Herbalife products. This biannual event started in 1957 when attending businessmen numbered about a thousand. This year, tens of thousands of business executives from all over the world will come here to negotiate product export contracts with the Chinese. Over 40,000 different items are on display, all the way from high-tech fiber optics to the most traditional Chinese works of art. You can find almost anything here, and it's all for sale. The size of the fair is absolutely amazing. The fair covers over a million square feet, and a sample of virtually every commodity China produces is on display. Petrochemicals should be receiving increasing worldwide attention in upcoming fairs. China's oil producing potential is said to be greater than the huge Alaskan field. And for the items that cannot be physically exhibited at the fair, there are working models, films, and photographs. Six billion dollars worth of business for the Chinese is generated here annually. High on our list of who to see here at the fair were top-ranking trade delegates who represent Chinese herbal medicines and pharmaceutical products for export. In the past, this group has helped us understand how different Chinese herbal ingredients, which have been used for centuries, are vital for our good health. Even more importantly, they've provided us with the scientific basis for each ingredient's success. This information, especially that proving safety and effectiveness, has been very helpful to us in the development of our current product line, and it will continue to be much needed input in the formulation of our future Herbalife products. Our negotiations at the Canton Trade Fair have resulted in sustaining our long-term business associations and our much-valued relationships with the People's Republic of China. I hope you've had as much fun on this trip as we've had. For us, it's just really been a tremendous success. 
all the way to buying the uh, herbs that are presently in all the Herbalife products to uh, negotiating still further on some of the ingredients that we've been trying to get out of the country to get into our country. But really the most exciting thing that we got is we got a couple of brand new herbs that will be coming out in formulations that are really going to be good for your health. Till next time, thank you very much for being with us and may God bless.